Welcome aboard on this uh, Monday afternoon. Hope you're having a pleasant one. Uh, but we had some good news last week, didn't we, that our unemployment rate has improved. The jobless rate fell from 66 in June to 6.2%, uh, meaning we're no longer bottom of the barrel. That dubious honour falls to Tasmania. Clearly, though, we need to focus on jobs for now and in the future. And that's where our schools come in, with thousands of jobs likely to be created through uh, the frigate and the submarine projects in the coming years. Will we be able to fill them, is one of the questions. Also, the other question is, are enough kids studying the right fields for the jobs of the future? We commonly hear the question or the statement that uh, a lot of our kids, uh, their jobs haven't been even invented yet. It's a, a very interesting future that we're staring down the barrel of. So to discuss it today, we've got a, a lineup of people that uh, might be able to help us, uh, head us in the right direction. And we'll start out with Susan Cameron, who's the Director of Learning and Improvement uh, with the Education Department. Hi, Susan. Hi, Alan. Thanks for your time this afternoon. Now, um, this is a, an interesting area, isn't it? A lot of uh, jobs haven't even th been thought about yet, but our kids will end up uh, doing them, you know, being headed in that direction in, in a career. I know it's hard to believe that the reception students from this year uh, will uh, be graduating in about 13, 31, and what people are saying is about 65% of the jobs they'll be going into haven't been invented yet. Mm. So it's really hard for us to get our head into it. So what we understand is kids need to study STEM subjects because that's the fastest growing field. But also we know that the sort of learning they do when they're solving problems, analysing facts, being creative are the skills they need for whatever jobs are created in the future. Mm. Now you mentioned STEM. Can we explain with the basics? What is STEM? Okay, so very good question. So STEM is really an amalgam of science, technology, engineering and mathematics. Engineering being the process we use to bring those learnings, learning together and do things. So traditionally it's been the disciplines mm -hmm. of science, technology, maths. What uh, we're doing now is transforming learning so that kids learn those subjects in, in together and usually what works best is working with industry to do that. So if young people learn, for example, science and maths because what they're doing is working with Haig's chocolates to resolve a problem that the board puts to them, then what they've got to do is apply their learning around a real-world problem. Right, OK. So that overcomes that issue, doesn't it, that perhaps when you and I were at school, you were very, very much working in a, in a silo, weren't you? You That's weren't right. dealing with the outside world, the real world, let's say. Exactly. Whereas now you've taken the initiative to actually uh, engage with, uh, with real organisations in the real world. That's right. So mm. what we expect is all of our secondary schools to have a, an industry partner into the future. So we've just announced $800,000 worth of grants for 40 secondary schools to develop those. And what we're seeing is some really terrific work where kids are working, for example, with uh, industry around sustainability or solar power or a, a range of different things where they bring the knowledge of science, maths and technology together to solve a problem or uh, create a new solution. That's a great initiative, mm -hmm. isn't it? Uh, and of course, it, it really needs a focus, doesn't it, in the earlier years at school as well. We tend to have to make really firm decisions, what, in year 10, 11? Oh, well, the evidence is showing that young people are starting to make career choices when they're in about year six. Right, that and early. And so part of our mm. strategy as well is to develop career education starting in primary schools. And um, one of the things we have found, though, is that some groups of students are much more interested or get engaged in STEM pathways than others. So we've done some research that shows that girls by the age of year three will have decided whether they're good at maths or science or not. So we're really doing a lot of work to make sure that all young people get excited and challenged mm. by learning in these areas. That's a very, very important mm. role. I've, I've put myself in that category because I was a bit rusty mm. at that end. I just wiped it. 
That's the, right. That, the, 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 uh, the, you know, the mass science just went out the window for, the, right. for the little hickey boy. And, and what we've seen, for example, in some of our statistics is that girls, people from low socioeconomic situations, Aboriginal kids are less likely to go on with STEM pathways, even if they're really good at them. So what we've done is we've um, developed a million dollar strategy, which is for scholarships for really capable young kids who might not be able to go on because of their personal personal circumstances to apply for up to $10,000 to continue their studying in STEM subjects in year 11 and 12. So we think that will make a big difference. And how much in total are you offering in those scholarships? So that's a million dollar program, right. but our whole STEM program is about $30 million over four years. And that goes along with the government's $250 million strategy, which is to build STEM facilities. Because Although the facilities won't do it on their own, if you've got exciting places mm. where it is possible to bring science, technology together or maths and technology together, then we know that will really support creation and innovation with our teachers as well as with our um, our students. And that's a really important point, isn't it? Because there's two elements here. There's one dealing with the real world and getting the teacher to actually inspire the students. That's right. And if you marry the two together then obviously you're heading absolutely in the right direction. That's right. So we've got about 2,000 Year 7 and Year 8 uh, secondary school students working together at the moment. And when I went to listen to some of the projects they were developing, the most exciting thing for me was to hear the primary and secondary teachers working and learning with each other because they said they had to learn how to collaborate mm. before they could really teach their children how to collaborate together when they're learning. Um, for example, the primary students were coming together to work with secondary students in the secondary STEM facilities. And what about uh, in that primary area then? Uh, again, getting back to those early years, that's yes. where the, the formative years, uh, what, what's happening in, in that section as far as getting the teachers involved? Okay, so we've got... I just want to talk about the preschool, if I can, yeah, because that's sure, teachers yeah. and students working together, being much more explicit about STEM learning in preschool. So while there's a strong play focus, we're really excited to see teachers really supporting uh, young uh, children, four- and five-year-olds, talking about measuring and, and balance and a whole range of STEM concepts really early. In the primary years, what our primary leaders have said to us is they uh, sometimes their primary teachers aren't as confident as they could be to really innovate because they might not have had as much access to quality STEM learning in their degrees, which is much more generalist. So we've got, uh, we're going to be working with 500 uh, primary teachers over the next four years to make sure they've got really solid background in the disciplines as well as bringing the disciplines together. So the initiative is there that uh, you're starting right at the very right at the bottom right and working your way up through Absolutely. the system. Absolutely. Yeah, yep. fantastic. Mm. A great, uh, great direction we're heading in. Yes. And it's all about the long term, isn't it? About it's, now, it's about, but, but in the long term. That's right. It's about the long term for our young people mm. to be, uh, you know, well prepared for the future. I and mean, we're very excited about uh, the, um, the submarine project because we think um, not only will there be lots of jobs available to young people so they can stay in South Australia and follow these pathways, but also it's a multi-generational commitment to South Australia so it makes I think us all feel more optimistic for the future and uh, more outward looking which I think is um, is very positive. Absolutely and uh, we should have more positive just mm. <laughs> pardon my <laughs> stumbling over that but let's face it there's a little bit too much negative negativity going around at the moment. We'll talk about uh, the submarine and the frigates uh, project and how our schools are uh, helping to prepare that workforce straight after this. Now, we're talking about jobs, and particularly jobs uh, not just here in the present, but uh, certainly in the future. And uh, we've got a, a, an impressive array of people to talk about uh, the, the direction we're heading in. We've just had a chat to Susan Cameron. from the uh, She's the Education Director for Learning and Improvement. She's telling us about uh, the initiatives that, uh, that are being undertaken by the department. But let's uh, check in at the coalface now, and it's a very good Afternoon to Eddie Kreskoviak from the Lefevre um, Lefevre sorry High School. G'day, Eddie. How are you, Alan? Good. Thanks for interrupting your class, or am I cutting across your lunch hour? 
No, no, I'm, I'm free at the moment. <laughs> That's all right, you're on a free. Yep. Now, listen, you're the maritime program leader at uh, at the high school, at Le- Le- yep. Lefevre High School. What is the, the, the maritime program? Just to tell us in a nutshell. So the maritime program covers a, a, a range of the skills that we see are going to be vital in the future. And so they are from certificate level courses that uh, cover the, you know, the engineering trades right through to the higher order thinking skills that are required for naval engineering and naval architecture. Now, this is obviously with uh, full, fully in sight of the, um, the frigate and the submarine projects that uh, we've won. Yes, correct. But it's even uh, it started before that because we've got a strong link with the ASC. So our engineering students, you know, were visiting the site of the air warfare destroyer and seeing where those skills are actually linked into the into the workplace and then the same with the naval engineering and architecture students who you know built a scale model of the uh, remote control air warfare destroyer and they were able to go and see the real product and and sort of compare their results and actually see how accurate their model was to the real thing that again sort of backs up what we were just discussing with susan doesn't it Uh, that uh, we're actually you know bringing the education into the real world rather than just uh, being restricted to the classroom Yeah, well, those links are vitally important. I think a lot of employers don't realise how important their role is to the student's education. Um, There's a little bit of a disconnect at times of, you know, where am I ever going to apply this learning? Um, Whereas now we can actually show them that link uh, by actually taking them to the place or have people, experts in their field, uh, talk to the students and say, look, you know, these are opportunities, these are pathways, these skills you're learning are going to lead to future career opportunities within this uh, sector. Mm. Do you find there's a bit of a feeling among some of the students about this negativity that, uh, you know, we're we're fairly well known for here in South Australia? Um, Regular listeners will know I'm a glass half full type guy. Let's let's be positive instead of negative. But what's the feeling from the students actually, you know, in the classroom? I think the students are slowly warming to the fact that there are going to be lots more of opportunities. You know, unfortunately, there are well, there are things at the air warfare destroyer that are shutting down. But we've got to look at the positives and sort of say, well, these things are going to happen. You know, there's going to be five thousand two hundred jobs created on the Lefevre Peninsula. You're only three to five kilometres away from that site. Mm how good's the lifestyle here and what would it be like to actually live and work in the area you grew up in. And we're talking long term, yep. as in, you know, get this long term within three to five years. That's not necessarily really long term, but, but in their eyes it probably is. Yeah, I think a few more of them are, are starting to actually get, as they get older into the, you know, year 10, 11 and 12, the finality of school starts to kick in. Mm. Um, and the fact that they've got to start making some real choices and uh, looking at those opportunities a, a little bit more seriously mm. and sort of thinking, well, if I apply myself, there are these opportunities. And, and uh, like Susan said, the STEM skills are what we deliver across a broad range of subjects, not just simply, um, you know, the science and maths areas, but in, in all areas. Mm. And it is a really uh, exciting time we're leading into with these big contracts, isn't it? I mean, the, the, the submarine contract for a start, there's going to be a building, isn't there, a shed built almost the size of the Adelaide Oval to build these things. And, I mean, it's just it's mind-blowing. Yeah, well, the infrastructure prior to the commencement mm. of these jobs is going to be quite large. And then, like, um, like you were saying, it's the intergenerational work. You know, I, I talk to some of the students and, and say to them, well, you know... The submarine project, the last submarine finishes in 2055 and it's hard for them to comprehend that many of them are going to be in their late 40s, early 50s <laughs> when that occurs. And, and, and it, it, I sort of said, well, you're going to have kids of your own and you're going to be saying to them the same thing we're saying to you now. Mm. What about a career in maritime? Mm. What about mm. shipbuilding? Absolutely. One thing I've got to say, Eddie, I'm still trying to get my head around is that apparently they build these submarines standing up. <laughs> In sections, they don't, you know, they're not 
built like a ship in, in you know, horizontally. They're actually built uh, vertically. Go figure. And then they lay them down and weld them together. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to have my tour. Let's check in uh, with uh, with Thierry Herman, who's a, a teacher at uh, the Fever High School, the STEM Educator of the Year. Congratulations, Your Honour. Well, how, how are you, Thierry? That's a pretty big honour. It, it was a great honour. Sorry? It was a great honour. Yes, absolutely. So how are you finding this? Uh, you're the one dealing with the kids, you know, face-to-face all the time. Um, are you finding they're being more upbeat about the future? Yeah, I think so, because they see they see the link with um, uh, industries. Yeah, I can give you a very quick example. For instance, the year 12 naval engineering students that I have, we... Uh, study the phase array radars that uh, are used on the air warfare destroyer. So they have a direct link with uh, what is happening, you know, a few kilometers away from them. And so they, they can see the physics and the mass involved in it, and they can see as well the link with um, um, local industries. Hmm. Hmm. Now, it's also not just uh, the engineering side of it uh, that you're concentrating oh, no. on. It's, it's also the fisheries industry, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Yes, we have students that are uh, doing this, uh, this course, and it allows them to gain uh, qualifications regarding uh, a coxswain um, uh, qualification to be able to go on board ships. Mm. And so we have students that come from our school that are able to go and, and do apprenticeships at ASC, for instance. And they, uh, they also uh, go on the one and all, um, because they have, it's part of their qualification. They have to do uh, sea time. And we have students as well that are able to, through the programs we offer, to uh, um, look at uh, tertiary education, like uh, uh, going to uh, AMC in Tasmania, mm-hmm. and also uh, going to uh, Flinders University, and they can do uh, uh, an engineering degree. Excellent. So we, yeah. we offer a wide array of, uh, of, of potential pathways. Fantastic. Uh, come back to you, Susan, uh, the, the Director of uh, Learning and Improvement. Um, this is really... Uh, something that's sailing under the radar, isn't it? People don't know this is actually happening out there. But it's a, it, it's a huge step in the right direction, uh, regardless of the politics involved. Let's throw the politics to one side. This is an area that we have to explore. Well, I think um, I think Adelaide is only just coming to understand what the whole submarine uh, frigate program is going to mean for us. But it does uh, fill me with optimism for young people for the future. The thing that both Thierry and Eddie were talking about, though, is the fact that we want really engaging learners learning for our young people and the engagement comes from them being able to apply it in context to see why they're engaging with really tricky challenging difficult concepts Mm. and to be able to use those because they're solving problems because we know to be well placed for the future kids do need to be able to solve problems meet challenges Uh, and do difficult things as well as easy things um, and even to fail at them from time to time so that they're really well prepared to solve problems into the future. Mm. So I'm very excited about the program at Lefevre but also at programs that are developing across our secondary schools across the state. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Let's check in with with a a lad who's actually uh, on this path, uh, Declan. Um, How are you, Declan? Yeah, I'm good yourself. What year are you in, mate? I'm in year 11. Year 11, okay. So uh, you've just finished your first semester of the Naval Engineering Studies, I believe. Yeah. How did you find it? Um, it leaves me speechless, the amount that um, Thierry is able to teach us in a semester. I feel like I've got a lifetime's worth of knowledge out of one semester, um, and it's really set me on a good path into engineering. That's fantastic, mate. Were you interested in engineering beforehand, or is this a, sort of a watershed um, moment for you? Pardon no, definitely. Um, since probably I was probably five years old when I wanted to start getting into engineering. Um, the fields of engineering have changed over as I've grown up, um, but definitely the engineering program that Little Fever offers has is providing me with um, a good foundation for the career that I want to build for myself. Hmm. So you're going to continue, obviously. I'm going to continue, most likely not into naval engineering, but definitely it's, it's going to help get into astronautical engineering. Okay, all right. So th- well, that's an interesting point. Just this introduction has uh, got you engaged enough to actually change direction but head in the in, in uh, to carry on. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 
um, the basis of knowledge that we get from naval engineering can be applied to, to all STEM disciplines. That's fantastic, mate. Congratulations. Um, and, yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, you know, obviously, Terry was listening in the background. I'm sure you'll get an A for your, for your next assessment, mate. <laughs> well well done. <laughs> He's already got an A, has he, Terry? <laughs> Listen, thanks so much uh, for uh, joining us, uh, Eddie and, and Terry and, and Declan. Uh, well done. Susan, Sorry. it really is a, um, a great initiative uh, and uh, something we have to be in for that long term. That's right. And we're very proud of the work our leaders in schools are doing, our teachers are doing, and it was just fantastic to hear Declan uh, so excited about what he's learning and that's that's the aim of this program mm. to really build authentic interesting engaging learning for our young people so they really thrive and are well prepared for the future now we've been talking about uh, Lefevre high school yeah. what other schools um do we what what can parents do if they're listening and they want to get the kids involved so uh they should uh, go in and talk to their child's teacher to start with or indeed to the principal to find out what their plans are most schools will have STEM learning on their plan. In Every school will have STEM learning on their plan between now and 2020, so it is an emerging area. I was really interested in a program that's being developed at Ocean View, which is just down the road from Lefevre, where they're working with an architectural company uh, company to help them design the learning spaces this is a, a, a preschool to year 12 school so what are the learning spaces what should they look like for little kids for medium-sized kids and for bigger kids with uh, more independent learning skills so the architects are working with the students to design those spaces which is a great innovation but in addition to that students are learning about how you learn to become an architect mm. at the same time mm. so it's shaping they're shaping their world but they're also learning for the future and uh, as i said every secondary school will develop a pathway in uh, with an industry partner but many of our primary schools are doing that as well Fantastic. Uh, well, watch this space, uh, all I can say. Really, really excited uh, uh, to be uh, talking about such a, a wonderful area that uh, we need to pursue for the future. Susan Cameron from uh, the Education uh, the Education Director for Learning and Improvement, thanks for your time. Eddie, uh, Thierry and uh, Declan out at Lefevre High School, uh, have a pleasant afternoon as well and good luck.